been years. No, sir, I've not been here for a <laughs> Okay, so I want to say you are welcome. So uh, I, I don't even know even I mean, how to speak Nigerian languages anymore. I, I don't even know how to say it. Um, I know you are welcome to South Africa. And yes, like if I'm to start my discussion, I just wanted to leave this one, I mean, at the background, the idea of moving from your your place of birth, your your fatherland. Uh, you know, I mean, your place of birth sometimes might not be your fatherland. We know that, I mean, in uh, based on the history that we've, uh, that we were told of and what we read in the Bible and some of people, possibly people that read from, from Quran, we knew that um, when the art was formed and men began to move from one place to the other, there was a particular time when you have to live where you are to go and conquer another land, you, you kill the people there and all those things. But I mean, a time came when things were settled, so people have now settled in their different locations. Yes, now, so, so where everybody has settled now became their land, the land, their ancestral lands. Now, um, if you live, uh, let's say, a particular place to another land, to sojourn there and, and, and you get married there and you have children there, um, your children are, are automatically not a citizen of the other land. They are citizens of where you came from. Let's say, for instance, uh, if you migrate from Malawi to Ghana and you have children in Ghana, your children are Malawians. They are not Ghanaians. So, except there are some laws later that probably you can naturalize. So, saying that uh, there, are, there, are, there have been movement from one, um, one, uh, <clears throat> one location to the other. So, and if we had to look at it very, very well, um, the idea of uh, movement or relocating, I mean, had been dated back. If we go to the Bible, Bible talks about um, Abraham when God told Abraham that he should leave his father's house into where um, he has been given, where God has given him. So, and there were reasons. There are always reasons why we have to move from one particular place to the other. So it is either possibly where you are staying, probably there is war there, or the climate is not okay, or finances uh, or the economies of that place is not okay. So we all want to move from one place to the other in search of <clears throat> a better livelihood, uh, something better, something greener. Even, even if you are born in the White House in the US and you can still <clears throat> relocate to Gambia, possibly you are looking for money, probably there are mines there or there are farms there or uh, other businesses, you just go there because you are looking for something better. You are looking for um, you are looking for money. Some people might relocate there permanently. Some might say, okay, no, I'm just going there to sojourn there for a particular period of time so that I can get what I want. Some people travel for, for health reasons. They want to go and, what do you call it? They want to um, go and treat themselves. I, I still remember the, the many people, I mean, in our family now that, that, that um, because, I mean, my father was a traditional healer. So there are people from my family now that uh, they actually migrated from different places. Um, I mean, when they came for treatment, but I mean, after they were treated, they felt okay for our family. And um, I just thank God for some reason in my family that we welcome everybody and say, look, anybody that is part of our family, we don't want to care either you are, either you are born there or your parents are not there in as much as if you are, <clears throat> you are part of our family, you are part. So, so people migrate from one place to the other for different reasons, for different reasons, for different purposes. So if I should now ask, although I've said a few things, if I should not ask us um, from our experience, please, I want us to, to talk interactively. Um, um, in recent times, what do you think makes people to travel? Okay, like many of us that are here in South Africa now, um, if I should ask us, let us be factual. 
why are you in South Africa? Can, can I just have either one or two, or let's say two or three people? Why are you in South Africa? Can I begin to mention names? You are welcome to do that, sir. Okay, Mr. John, John Adesino, why are you in South Africa? Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you for, for the talk, sir. Well, I'm in South Africa to, to study and to improve my uh, employability appeal. So, and to so just the greener pasture. So that's just it. And you left your country because you 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 feel that um you can't study um probably the environment there is not very good the educational system there is not very good for studying and possibly you might not be able to get a job in Nigeria. Am I wrong? Yeah. No, it's just a part of it. You're not wrong, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Aditayo Omo Shose. Is it Mr. Aditayo or Aditayo Mo Shose? Can you? Um, I will hear from you. Uh, oh, yes, it's Aditayo Mo Shose. Yes. Oh, yes, I'm in um, South Africa to um, further my studies. I'm, I'm doing my um, um, PhD in construction management. Then after that? Uh, I think I missed the second question. Sorry. So, so I mean, after you got your PhD, then you turn back to Nigeria. Uh, <laughs> um, after my PhD, I intend to um, for that. So, um, but going back to Nigeria is not a uh, priority. Okay, thank you so much. No, um, I, I think I mean, if we are to be sincere, to, I mean, with ourselves, we all left home, possibly because things were not right at home. Let me tell you about my story. I arrived um, South Africa on the 2nd of March, 2005. Um, I was employed in Nigeria. I was a lecturer at Futa. I was doing my PhD there, but things were not going on very well. Things weren't going on well. And, and I was looking for where to go and do my PhD. So, 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 so I, mean, I got admission in the UK, uh, no scholarship, I got admission. Um, in Australia, no scholarship. I mean, I got admission in the US, but it was for masters. So, and sometimes you now thank God that probably there are some studies that you didn't take. We might be saying, oh, um, and that was, was actually with funding, but I, I later thank God because I would have gone there, but possibly what I'm doing now, I may not have been able to do it. So, but um, it just came that, okay, like uh, there was this funding from the African um, University Network, I mean, um, uh, ANSTI, that we should go, we can, that one is supposed people to travel to other African countries, to go and do their work and to return back to their countries. And lo and behold, I, I saw the project I was doing, the only country where they, they do this kind of project is South Africa. And I applied, um, actually I didn't get the fund, so, but later my, my host invited me that I can come and spend a year to do my work. My intention was to do my experiment and to return back to Nigeria. But lo and behold, here am I today. And now is that okay? Like I, mean, I came, I, mean, I left there because of love. There are no facilities. And okay, let me just tell my stories better so that, so that we can all understand. Now I left. Nigeria, because there was no research laboratory. Anybody that studied engineering, especially materials engineering in Nigeria, you know, there are no labs. So, so, so now, um, after um, when I was doing my work, my supervisor saw me, saw the way I was working. Within the first, um, the first three months, I've already published two papers, adverts. I hope Mr. Levite um, will be here. I mean, we are together at Vets then. I mean, he was his staff at Vets. So, so. So, 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 so within two months, within two months, I published two papers. And my supervisor said, no, Peter, I don't want you to return back to Nigeria. I want you to register for your PhD at VETS. And he had to write my supervisor and wrote the VC in Nigeria. And he said, okay, it's fine that I could, I mean, I should continue my PhD and now register afresh. And after I finished my PhD, 
I returned back to Nigeria, and and lo and behold, my mom, um, I mean, my wife was still here, and we had our last child, and I came, I mean, as I came the following day, I mean, as I started strike, during the period of strike, I got a position, I mean, at TUT, as a lecturer, and I mean, I related with my supervisor in Nigeria, with my boss in Nigeria, he said, no, Peter, continue. During the process, I was able to apply for funding because, you know, I knew what, what made me to leave Nigeria to come to South Africa then. So, and when I got a position and the opportunity was there to, to, to apply for equipment so that one can set up labs, I applied for equipment. Lo and behold, my first grant, that was in the year 2011, I got 7 million, 7 million rands to set up a lab. And when I got back to Nigeria, my, um, my bosses, uh, my HOD and my mentor said, no, Peter, you're not returning back to Nigeria. You have to go back to South Africa because those labs are the thing that we are looking for. We have to be begging people to go to, um, to, go to US, to go to UK. You have to return back to, um, to South Africa. And I mean, I mean, any of you that is close to me, any of you doing, doing engineering, either mechanical or maintenance engineering, you understand what I'm trying to say. If you go to the, uh, to the lab we set up at TUT and one at UJ, but I understood why did I leave Nigeria then? I left because there were no facilities. So now if you leave Nigeria to a particular country, the question is that, let me ask you. The question is that, are you, I mean, do you have the intention of building, of making where you are a better place or where you are a worse place? So these are some of the things that we need to ask. Okay, if you are here, you, you, you came here to do your master's or you came here to do your PhD and you knew very, very well that where you came from is not okay. Now, how are you living your life here? Are you living it, living it in a way that possibly other people, I mean, your supervisor can say, no, go and get me Nigerian students. When I was at Bates, because I was so close, that was where myself and Professor Marwala met, then she was, I mean, was at Bates. So he was just happy, Peter gave me Nigerian students, Peter gave me Nigerian students because of the experience that he had when he was doing his PhD. When I was at TUT, people would tell, tell me, Peter helped me get Nigerian students. When I first came to, even up to now at UG, people still tell me, help me get Nigerian students. So the glory of God, I mean, the few people that have brought here, I always tell them, sit them down. You have to portray yourself. You have to behave well. You have to do this. You have to do this. You have to do this. Because the way you live your life, we make people, we make the people that you work with, you no, know, help me get other people from your side. But now if we are here, we are destroying the system. Even the lab that you are working on here, the facilities there, you don't even take care of it. The computer of, of your, I mean, some of you are here, probably your, your spouse had, um, I mean, software. I mean, all that you are trying to do is to steal the software and be using it to, to make money for yourselves. Or you are using your spouse's, I mean, facilities to be doing, to be doing projects for other people and you're collecting the money, you are saving it. That means that you are already destroying the system. Now, after you have destroyed the system, at the end of the day, the country will become worse than where you come from. Now, think of the nearest future. What do you think will happen to the next generation? The, I mean, the privilege that you have, that you had to have brought you to South Africa, do you think that other people will have similar privilege? These are some of the things that we just need to think of. But like now, when I saw the topic, living right in a, in a foreign land, yes, it has its own benefit. One is that if you are living okay in South Africa, your, your ways of life, your contribution to the economy, your, your contribution to your research group, like I told you, I came. So let me just say, say this. Um, when I came and I was, and I was writing paper for my, for my supervisor, my friends, my colleagues, I still remember an elderly, I mean, an elderly guy. I mean, he was a lecturer at Unibane. Um, she was a bit, I think about four or five years older than myself. So Peter, you are just publishing, you are just publishing for your spouse. Your spouse is just using you. He's just using you to make money. Look at how much I'm earning. Because then he was earning 6,500. And my spouse was managing to give me 2,500. So Peter, I mean, your spouse was just using you. You know, as human being, you, you feel a bit bad. And I felt bad. I went to meet the secretary um, to my boss. 
And luckily enough, there's something about me that I'm always very free. I relate with people a lot. And secretary told me, Peter, look, your sponsor is training. He is actually giving you the last money that he had. So it's fine. So, and, and, and I said, wow, this is true. And when I met him and that man again, and for me, the member talking, I said, Peter, no, you're, you're using you. I said, yes, it's true. He's using me to publish, but those papers, my name has, my names are also there. I'm a lecturer, definitely those papers will count for my promotion. So what am I trying to say is that many of us here, you see your colleagues, your, we, we tell you this is what my spouse is giving me, my spouse is giving me this, my spouse is giving me this, and they will just, I mean, they will, they will discourage you. You might have had a very good relationship with your supervisor before. Before you know it, we colleagues, we Nigeria, we know the way we talk. I mean, you will destroy other professors. So, so professors so, so is not doing well. It's, it's not doing well. It's not doing well. They are just shooting you. They are just using you. But the fact is that if you are not used, you will be useless. I will tell my students, if you are not used, you will be useless. So please and please, like when you are in a foreign land, live your life in a way that one, thinking of the fact that some people will benefit. Understand that you have, you are in, in this particular country because the system was okay. Are you going to are you going to ensure that the way you lived your you live your life here will make the system better? It will be better for you to 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 to, to I mean to um, it will be better for you to live a life that will make that environment better. Many of us we are here we begin to claim a lot of uh, a lot of rights. Uh, I mean, some of you are here. You you you, uh, uh, you say no. I mean. My spouse is supposed to give me this. My spouse is supposed to give me this. You even know what your spouse is going through. Probably you apply for funding. You are you are you begin to claim laws. Now, I mean, let me just give you an example. There was a time that I had scholarship for almost fifty something students. I have to give to my friends. Then I had a, a, a lot of students. Now I don't have I don't have scholarship um, scholarship anymore, and I have almost about about currently I have about. Uh, six Nigerian students, they have no funding. The little funding I have, I have to pay their fees and I have to distribute the money to them. But some of them will be saying, I know that the money they are getting is, is low. And I ask them, why are you here? Are you here because you want to come and work or you come and, you come and study? So, 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 so the fact is that, so, um, okay, so, 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 so the fact is that if you try as much as possible to live I mean, I, I, I mean, to make your spouse, so, okay, sorry, I mean, as I was trying to say, you know, some of my students have published a lot of papers, and from those funding, I've, I've used those funding, the money I get to to, employ, um, to get other students. So now, um, if you are in a foreign land, if you are working with a particular supervisor, at the end of the day, you are not contributing. How do you want that supervisor to get money to be able to help other students? So these are basic facts that, I mean, that we have to look at. I mean, some of us are here, like I'm trying to say, we, we claim right. And where we come from, we cannot claim those rights. Now, if you have claimed right, I mean, I have seen a particular, even I mean, here in the, I mean, here in Nigeria, you, I mean, here in South Africa, you, you understand that some of us, we come here, the way we live our life. Some professors, we, some people we, we live on life, some people we cook data to publish papers. At the end of the day, some of them have been caught. Now, it means that we have now lived a life that people will be sub um, so, what do you call it and um, so um who will, I mean so I mean suspicious of I mean, anybody come come from Nigeria. So my advice to many of us is that let us try to live a life in a way that one the, the environment that we came to the environment will be better. Second thing is that a time we come where the people is okay when they see people coming from your area no let bring these Nigerians. Okay, um, if we look at now, it is difficult now for us to get visas to South Africa. Why do you think so? Because of the way many of us in Nigeria have been behaving in South Africa. The way we behave when we get to even the Nigeria embassy, I mean, in Lagos or in Abuja. We don't even understand that whatsoever we are doing now has, um, has effect on the generations to come. So the way we live our life will either make a life better for other people to come or make a life difficult for other people to come. And the way we are going living our life here will actually even make it easy for us to, to understand that, okay, like, like I mean, even 
after you have gotten your scholarship, I mean, got your PhD, now will you be able to be employed because of the way? Um, I mean, because of the way. Sorry, if some of you are sending messages, I can't read very well. Uh, okay. So, 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 because of the way that we live our life, okay, I mean, I understand. I mean, there's a particular professor. I, I'm sorry, you know, I'm talking about uh, academics before we are we are lecturers here. I'm sorry. So, 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 this professor, all that he does is that anybody, anybody that comes around his ways, he's always there to go and one way or the other to go and look for help for that. I mean, for that professor. I mean, for those students. Now, because of the way that this man had lived his life, so now the university now told him, because I said, no, go and get me someone from your country that we are going to employ because we want someone that will take after what we are doing. So the way we live our life in a foreign land has a lot of um, um, either positive or negative, uh, I mean, influence. Let me just say this. Uh, when the Israelites were being taken, I mean, into captivity, uh, and Jeremiah told them that when you go there, uh, eat what they eat, do what they do there, pray for the land. That uh, in the good of that land, we also, also have our own prosperity. So if we're in a foreign land, we should try the best of our ability to pray for the country that we are. Pray for the university that you are. If South Africa is better, it will be better for us. If the economy of South Africa is better, our economy will be better. If, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that many of you now, we are very proud of UJ because UJ now is being ranked the second, although there are still a few issues. But the fact is that among the ranking of the universities, I mean, in South Africa, there's no way that UJ can be lower than five. See, the university was just established in 2005. See our ranking now, second, because a lot of people contributed to it. Now, and we are proud that the university, I mean, anywhere I go, I'm always proud that I'm from UJ. But the fact is that, um, I, I mean, the contribution of um, individual contributions has made us to be where we are. Now, okay, if we are, sorry, um, I live not far from the um, from the Air Force Base here. You will see a lot of um, some of this plane moving. So 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 so, so I mean, you hear the noise disturbing us. So 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 so, so um, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I'm trying to uh, okay. So I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm trying to forget what I'm trying to say. So so like okay, let me just I mean say this thing. Um, I mean. Said this one right. So, like, um, if you try as much as possible to ensure that you are part of the system of the university and contribute to the, to the growth of the university, you will be proud of that university. I'm sure that many of us are proud that we are from UG. Those times, can I tell you? I mean, I saw that bit. You know, people people rank UG very very low, but for the past for the past seven eight years now or let's say this past uh, six, five years ago, you just picking up and we are very proud because each and every one of us has contributed to it. So now let me ask you, will you not be proud if let's say the next five years, the next 10 years, UJ becomes the best university um, in South Africa. Will you not be proud if let's say the next 20 years, the next five years, the next 10 years, South Africa becomes the best country in the world? Because this is where we are now. We have to be part of what is happening here. We have to be part of the development. We should not be part of destroying, destroying the system. I always tell my student, I was telling the president when he was with me, I always tell my student, whenever you come, my Nigerian student, I'm sorry to say this, I always call them, I don't want any of my South African, I mean, my Nigerian guy, I, want, I don't want to see you around my South African students, female students, no. But I know the way we do. Before you know it, you move from, um, you move from uh, one place to the other, you begin to sleep with them. Don't come and leave a bad, I mean, a bad reputation. But I mean, as I speak now, three of my South African students are marrying Nigerian, I mean, no, um, three of my South African female students have married Nigerian. 
and two of them are still married my Nigerian students because the way they've left their life. They live their life in a way that, I mean, they carry themselves, they assist them with their, with their period. Even their parents are happy with it. But I sat them down and I guided them. But I mean, you, you all know exactly what I have to say. You can't come here and come and destroy what, what is being built. So and I'm also trying to encourage us. Some of us, we left Nigeria. Um, Nigeria, um, those days I don't know for now, you don't dig in campuses. You don't, I mean, even to even smoke around, even some of the things that we cannot even do at home. Now, when we come to South Africa now, because here is a bit free, before you know it, Nigeria will begin, uh, Nigeria will begin to, uh, to, 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 we are seeing places where Nigeria, I mean, has been encouraging the uh, South Africans into prostitution. Is that what we're supposed to be doing? No, these are not good things. We should live a life that, that I mean, probably you, you publish the best papers or you go and present paper, people say, that's a Nigerian. I mean, I'm sorry to say, I, I travel a lot with many of my, many of my students. When I was still at TUT, then I had most of my students as South African students. Here now, I, I have about 40% South African students, 60% foreigners. I mean, I, I, mean, I travel with, with, with my students and I've told them that any country, any conference that you go, if you see a black person in, in that conference, know that it's a Nigerian. The first time I travel with them, they saw black people, they saw Nigerian there. Second one, so every time I travel with them, they, they, they said, no, prof, we know that Nigerians will be there. And that's the best thing. Nigerians, you go and present papers. You go to um, California, you go to Tokyo, you go to I mean, Australia and present papers. That would be the best thing. Living, I mean, saying that, oh no, that guy from South Africa is a Nigerian. When, I mean, when the minister, when people say, no, Nigerians, uh, here they are doing best, they are doing best, they are doing best. Yes, I mean, even if there are going to be laws against foreigners coming here, if there are issues of, let's say, xenophobia, they will say, no, this set of people, no, you should not chase them away because they are always excellent. So I don't know if I have talked or not. So I will now allow us uh, some time for, for questions for, for us to ask, I mean, and for us to, I mean, to ask a few questions, to know um, possibly, I mean, if there are things that, um, I mean, I really don't know, or, or if there are bony, bony issues. But um, before that, let me just um, try to conclude. Understand, um, one is that, why have you left your fatherland? If you come to South Africa because, because you want to study and to get a job, have you, are you facing your studies? Are you making yourself uh, employable? That's number one. What is your purpose of coming to South Africa? What is your mission here? Is it to make it better or to make it worse? Please and please. Um, let me just try to round up this one. Some of us that we are here that want to look for a job, we all know Africa, how Africa, uh, how difficult Africa is now. Uh, South Africa, there are no jobs. But do you know that there are still several other countries that are, that, I mean, that are, that are there that we can go? I mean, I'm, I am talking now, I have had nothing less than eight of my Nigerian students that visit, that study here in South Africa. Some of them are in Australia, some are in US, some are in Canada, some are in Finland, some are in UK. So, uh, South Africa is a better place of, um, I mean, the equivalent system here is far, far better. Um, it cannot be compared with Nigeria. It can be compared with places like, like Australia, like UK. And the fact is that the cost of education here is very cheap. So you can come here, you can study here. I mean, if we live our life in a better, uh, I'm sorry to say, many of us, we are a student of a particular professor. If you assist that professor, if you work well with that professor, if you work with the professor that you are working with and you are living, say, sir, I have a friend from Nigeria. I have a friend, I have this, I have that. Can you please accept? Immediately they will say, bring the student. And the student will also come. I mean, as the student is finishing, who knows? Opportunity might be there in the US for you. It is easier for you to go to US from South Africa than from Nigeria. It is easier for you to go to UK from South Africa than from Nigeria. It is easier to visit, to, to go to other countries from South Africa than from Nigeria. Now, I mean, I, mean, I have a 10 year visa to, to the UK, I mean, to the US. 
But if I have applied it from Nigeria, they will not even give it to me because I'm in Nigeria and South Africa. So, and they've seen what I've been doing. So please, let's all try to see how we can live a better life here so that tomorrow it will actually benefit the country that we have, how we can contribute and make the country better, how we can contribute and make our life better, how we can contribute and make it better for other people to have the same opportunity and how we can make it better so that we can actually return back. Some of us I want to return back to Nigeria and to make our land better. Some of us we definitely were returning back to Nigeria. So I think I should be able to end here. I don't know, it's not a lecture, it's not a keynote talk, just a discussion. So let me now allow people to ask questions. And if people don't ask, I will ask a few questions also. Thank you very much, Professor Sir. Uh, we are so very grateful. We've learned a lot. From your, from your discussion. And we really appreciate the fact that uh, it's not so, so formal. So it's very interactive and people are free to um, be able to also add their opinions. One of the things that I've been able to pick out from what you've said is that um, as a number one thing is, that um, you relocate to a country, not just to get the better part of that country, but you also need to have it in mind that you need to make that country better for others. Which as in that's the way I was able to paraphrase it. And I think that is a key point for um, everyone to um, put at the back of their mind because the truth of the matter is, if we come to South Africa and we destroy it, then what do we expect other Nigerians that want to come down here to school to meet on ground? Like you said, part of the challenges that we seem to be facing as a international student or like a black, black Africans, or let me say other African nationals in, in South Africa, part of it is attributed to what some, some of our brothers and sisters have actually done. They've actually spout the name, so to say. And then um, another thing I was able to also pick is uh, if you are not used, you will be useless. I understand that very well, but um, I think there is um, a person amongst us who needs proper, as in maybe a clarity on that. Because for some people, probably because they've been used in courts, they now feel like um, people are taking advantage of them. So I don't know if you can actually elaborate on that as in what you actually meant by if you are not used, you will be useless. So that people don't see it from the angle of people taking advantage of them. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, um, Prof. Lubambi, I don't know. Sorry, Prof, to quote you. This is Dr. Kingsley. I don't know if I can just reply to his last issue before you, you reply, Prof. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you, sir. You can go ahead, Dr. Kinsley, sir. Okay, thank you. So um, just like one somebody said, including um, one Mr. Wonsu who is on the group, let me use the, the Igbo apprenticeship, which is also tenable in the Yoruba land, or Moishe. You have to go through the apprenticeship first before your ga or your boss will give you your freedom to be able to go and practice on your own. Now, in academic, it, it may seem like that also. For instance, you think your boss or your prof is using you because you are just publishing and publishing. In fact, we are known in, in, in the country as a publishing machine that you keep publishing and you're not getting paid. Whereas in some cases, some, some of your colleagues are getting remuneration for every paper paid and the rest. But you know, there are some journals you will submit to that they will not allow you if not for the name of your boss. There are some publications that the, your boss will pay for. You are not the one paying for the APC. That's the publication charge. And this gives you more citations. And with time, that citation will be very useful. I will take a case in point, which is during my PhD at UKZN in Dublin. I was publishing at a point I wouldn't fear that my co-supervisor and my supervisor were using me. But you know, when I got the opportunity to 
when I graduated and the first appointment I got, it was those publications that actually opened the door for me. So oftentimes you might think they are using you, but just like what Prof had earlier said, it is preparing you for the task ahead. It is really not using you. So sometimes we should be patient. You need to learn the rope first under somebody that has gone way ahead. That's why choosing your boss matters. You need to choose somebody that have gotten a name that you can learn from. Whatever happened, don't see it as if you are being used. See it as an apprentice that is undergoing the rope. Learn as much as you can during your tutelage before you become independent on your own. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, okay. sir. Yeah, yes, thank you, Dr. Kinsley. Okay, sorry. Um, let me just say this. Just to continue what I tried to say. You know, I'm, well, I don't know if I have time, I will share my personal experience with my, my father. But let me just answer directly from my personal experience. Like I told you, I came to VETS. Um, that was um, May 2nd, 2005. By May 5, I was supposed to go to Cape Town for a conference. They supposed to book me flight. I said, no, that I want to go by a road. How many of us want that one? Because I looked at it then, road transport was cheaper. I said, I want to go by a road. My boss kept looking at me. The first three months, I published two papers, two journal papers. My boss told me that when I register for my PhD, that he's going to give me enough money. I registered. Uh, July 2005, and all my boss was to give me was to give me 2,500 for three months. Then he had no money anymore. At the end of the day, he told me to submit my dissertation because I've, I've already done a lot of work on it I'm on time. I'm, I'm just saying this so that we, we know. Now, I submitted my dissertation in March um, 2006. But luckily enough, by February, I got, I got a funding from the university. My boss was the one that, that approved it for me, and I was being paid 6,500. You understand me now? Because I've been publishing, for that first year, I ended up publishing four papers for him. Now, after that one, I submitted my dissertation. My boss went to go and get me a postdoc. And I was pay, being paid. 10,000 for the postdoc, 10,000 for postdoc, and I was still getting 6,500. And I spent three years because my thesis came with some issues. I have to start again. So from July 2006 up till July 2008, I was collecting 16,500. And after that, I still work for another postdoc for, for six months. So till December 2008, 16,500. Do you know how much that one is now? And this is someone that started, and people are telling him, no, your boss wants to use you. If you are not used, I always say, I'm, I'm glad I quoted it. If you are not used, you are useless. Please, I mean, I, I mean, please, let me continue my experience. When I came to, um, I went to Nigeria by May, I mean, by May 30, 2009, because I, I went to Nigeria December 2018, by May 24, my, my wife had our last baby. I came May 30 for, for the naming, which is on Sunday. By, by June 1, Professor, um, Professor Marwala was the dean of engineering. Then he called me. He said, I should come and start, start postdoc with him. I told my boss in Nigeria, my boss said, start, don't worry. And Marwala said, I should, be, I should be working with Professor Mulaba. I spent three months at UJ. Then a track was there. I just saw this advert at TUT. I saw the advert at TUT. They are looking for it's not, it's not a leadership position. I said, let me just try it. There, there was already an internal person that they wanted to appoint. But when I submitted my CV, they saw my publications. The one that Nigeria has made me to understand that I was being used. When they saw my publication, the dean said, the dean called me. He said, Peter, I like your CV. I went for the interview, I was given the position. And there was an internal person in that department They didn't give the position. And that was actually the one that they created the position for. When I left TUT in 2015, the main issue was that um, my, then, then I was using uh, work permit. 
and TUT so that anyone that was not uh, that not a, I mean, a citizen that they will not give them permanent job anymore. People say I should beg. I say, I'm not begging. The same person, the same person, Marwala said, Peter, send your CV. I sent my CV there. They wanted to consider me for an associate professor in chemical engineering. But when I went for the interview, according to what people told me, the people that attended the interview, because one of them had to be my friend from another university that they invite at the panel. They said they saw my CV, they saw my publication. I still remember the Dean of Economics. She was a woman, she was a white woman dead. She asked me, said, Peter, how managed you were able to publish this number of papers? That was as 2015 um, May. How come that you were able to publish almost 12 papers? Science Direct, I mean, SEVA papers. You know, because I have been trained when my fellow Nigerians were telling me that I was being used. So those, because of my publication skills that, that, that it's as if I was being used then, those are the things that helped me. Often today, often I speak now, when I apply for, for NRF, <clears throat> what they say about me is that <clears throat> I have good publication record. I have trained a lot of students. So the same people that will say that, um, the same people that are using you, please and please, just as um, Dr. Kinsley has said, if you want to go to business, I mean, I have two very good Igbo friends. You need to have gone through training a lot. If you want to be, be a mechanic, they will have to use you. You're about people that are more the mechanic. They will use you a lot. So if you are not used, you will not get experience. Please and please try the best of your ability. If you are, I mean, I'm sorry to say, if you are publishing for a supervisor and the supervisor has fund is not supporting you, don't worry. Don't worry. Just do it as if it is unto God. A day will come when God will compensate you. Let us not look for the compensation of man. Just do your own part. That is my humble advice for you. And if you still want to ask, you know, you want to see me in my office, you can come. We, we discuss more about it. But please, don't ever think that anyone is using you. They are actually making you. They are making you useful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Sir. We are so grateful. Um, does anyone have any other question to ask the professor or you, you're still thinking about it? Okay, while you're at it, um, I want to use this medium to recognize the representative from Access Bank, that's uh, Mr. Thomas Nkuna. Um, I don't know if um, Mr. Malefo is already online. Mr. Malefo, sir. Okay. I'm not seeing anyone signifying that they have questions. So while we are waiting for Mr. Malefo to come online, let me quickly do an introduction of the um, Access Bank uh, representative. So um, for this administration, Consuge Executives is trying to see how we can ensure that our members are well taken care of. Now, we can provide you with money, we can provide you like a groceries and the rest, but we can actually provide a platform like this, whereby you get uh, information on how to uh, enjoy your stay in South Africa without much stress. So we've been able to contact Access Bank to come talk to us, especially where it concerns the money exchange, because we know that is one of the challenges that we as students face, um, especially when it comes to either I'm sending money home or receiving money from home. We know what the black market rate says. So Access Bank has been... Um, Access Bank has been very nice to us by um, accepting our invitation to give us a 10 to 15 minute presentation this morning on um, what and what benefits students like us or consulate members, staffs, that's Nigerians in um, South Africa in general, 
can actually benefit from them when it comes to the area of uh, money exchange and the likes. As such, I would like to introduce um, the National Manager Branch Banking of um, Assets Bank PLC South Africa, Mr. Thomas Umpuna. Mr. Thomas, sir, I don't know if you're ready for present. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Sorry that we had to take you off uh, your uh, family time because we know it's a uh, heritage day. We are so sorry, but at the same time, it's a privilege having you to um, put us in mind and create time for us out of your busy schedule. So we'll give the floor to Mr. Thomas to give us a present as in a presentation about Access Bank and what they have to offer. Each and every one of us know who Access Bank is, at least we know there's Access Bank in Nigeria. That alone, it's um, then um, Access Bank is a brand name in Nigeria, just like we have GTB and the rest. So it's a trusted brand name when it comes to banking. And um, we believe it's still the same uh, weights that they carry in Nigeria, if I'm going to use that word, that they also carry here in um, South Africa. So thank you, Mr. Thomas. You can take the floor, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. James, for the good uh, introduction, as well as the opportunity uh, to give us some time to share a little bit about uh, Access Bank and good morning to all that are on the line. And I'd also like to observe the protocol. And then also just to thank uh, Professor Alubambi for that awesome uh, keynote address. Uh, highly appreciated. I also took out some insights from that uh, presentation. Thank you for allowing us, Mr. President, to join the CONSERV uh, Symposium. And I couldn't join the, uh, the link with my laptop, so I then sent you the presentation. I'm not sure if you'll be able to share it for me on your end, uh, Mr. President. Oops, my apologies. Um, did you send it via um, the email? Yes, it's on email. But then if you're not able to do so, it's OK. I'll just go through it uh, briefly. Uh, let me just check. As a, let me okay. check. I'm actually downloading it. Sorry, I didn't see that on time. Thank you so much. Okay, so let me just share the screen. Um, is it on, sir? It's on. Thank you very much, Mr. President. You're welcome. All right. So thank you very much. Um, maybe by way of introduction, my name is Thomas Nguna. I'm the National Manager for Branch uh, Banking here at Access Bank in South Africa. And I think the president has done a good uh, introduction or a good job in the introduction, just to mention that Access Bank, it's you know, a big brand in Nigeria. Uh, actually, we consider ourselves as one of the biggest retail bank in Africa because we, we're growing and we continue to grow as Access Bank. And then maybe just to give you a little bit of background, uh, Mr. President, if you could just go to slide number three. 
Oh, okay. This one. Thank you. So you'll be my driver. You'll be my driver for this morning. No <laughs> Thank problem. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So on the on this on this slide is just a brief um, overview of the bank. So Access Bank, like I've mentioned, is a global bank which is based in Nigeria, where it employs over uh, twenty eight thousand across their subsidiaries, um, which is mainly in the uh, sub-Saharan Africa as well as the United Kingdom. We have branches in Dubai as well as in UAE. And then we have representative um, offices in China, Lebanon, as well as India. And we also listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange since 1998. And also Access Bank is a diversified financial institution that combines, combines a wide range of retail customers and a digital platform with deep experience in corporate banking, proven risk management, as well as capital management uh, resources. And also Access Bank, a PLC is a leading full service commercial bank operating through the network of more than 660 uh, branches. And, and most of these branches are in the Nigeria. I think Nigeria alone has about uh, just over 500 um, of these uh, branches and as well as service points. And then we also have presence in the three continents and we have presence in the 15 countries in, in this continent alone. And I know for a fact, which I'll just share just now, there's also two more subsidiaries that uh, have been added on the list. And then we have over 49 million customers as Access Bank globally. The bank serves its diverse market through four business segments. So we offer um, services in the retail uh, space, also for companies, uh, co uh, commercial, as well as uh, corporate uh, banking. And then the bank also have more than 900 shareholders, including several Nigerians and international institutions investors. After its merger with Diamond Bank in March 2019, Access Bank has become one of the largest retail bank due to its, its customer base, especially in the retail space where we have more than 49 million customers. And Mr. President, we can just move on the next slide just to look at our global scale in terms of our presentation. This is just a view of where the bank is currently represented, like I've mentioned, with in three continents and then also in the, um, I mean, in, in the continent of Africa, we are in 15 uh, countries and you can just see there on the map where exactly you find Access Bank in Nigeria, we are in Ghana, Sierra Leone, Congo, DRC. We are in Mozambique. We are in Zambia, um, and the rest of the countries that are also on the on the screens. And then the new subsidiaries that we've also added on the list uh, recently it is Botswana as well as Cameroon, whereby we've bought existing banks and converted them to uh, Access Bank, and we continue to grow at a very rapid pace in terms of acquiring other banks in the countries where we don't have a, a representation as yet. And I think by the end of this year, we will probably be represented probably in 20 countries in the, in the continent because there's other um, conversations that are currently taking place. And then if we move to the next slide, it's just the local presence that we have in South Africa. Like I've mentioned, we are still new in South Africa. We are only a year old. We got our license as Access Bank South Africa from, an, um, from last year in June. We just celebrated our first anniversary and we have since managed to grow our representation across the country. And this map gives you a view of exactly where we are. If you go into the Western Cape, we have two offices in the Western Cape. We have the business bank suite as well as the retail branch. And then if you move up into the KZN, KwaZulu Natal, we have uh, a business bank suite at the Mthana. And then we also have a retail branch, which we current, we're currently working on to open around October in the Devon CBD. And then you go up there in the map in Limpopo, whereby we've recently opened a new branch at Polokwane at Savannah Mall. This branch was actually opened this month, at the beginning of this month. And then if you go into Gauteng, we have our head office in Santin in Inanda Greens Business Park. 
And then we also have our high net worth uh, suite at Da Vinci Hotel. This is um, in the middle of Sentin, where we bank our high net worth uh, customers um, from South Africa and across the subsidiaries where we're operating from. And then we've also recently opened a new branch in Pretoria. This is in Semimax Square. Um, we've opened this branch last month. And then also in Gandhi Square, Johannesburg, we've opened a branch last year in September and we're working on the retail rollout. So the plan is by 2027 to have opened at least 40 branches nationally. So if we look at this map next year, we will probably have more representation in some of the provinces where we have not had any representation as yet. So those conversations are currently taking place and we aiming to grow into those um, provinces. And then we'll move into the next slide. Um, these slides that um, are coming forth is just on our offerings. So just to understand what are some of the products that we offer. And the first uh, retail offerings that we have, it's on the transactional accounts. Um, on these transactional accounts, we offer two different accounts. So there's a first account that we charge seven rent a monthly fee, and there's a second account where we charge 20 rent monthly fee. So with the seven rent monthly fee, it's a pay as you transact account, whereby for each and every transaction that you do, you'll be charged for it. So you get a debit card on this account, you're able to draw your statements, you are able to make withdrawals, you're able to make deposits, you're able to you know, do uh, app transactions because we also link you to the Access More banking app. And then you're also able to uh, transmit funds. So you can actually move funds from this account into um, probably your account at home. Let's say you have an access account maybe in Nigeria, you'd want to move funds. You are able to, to move those funds from this account to that account in Nigeria. And then also you can send money anywhere across the globe. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, in Nigeria alone. And then the next account where you pay the 20 rent monthly fee, it works the same as the seven rent. However, on this account, we give you monthly loyalty or rewards. So if you use this account, you make sure that you at least have seven transactions taking place on this account. You get 25 rent meal voucher, either from Steers, Wimpy or Nando's on a monthly basis. And then you also get 150 megabytes of data from MTN. And then you would also receive um, a hundred rent uh, intercity bus a voucher that you can use for your long distance um, uh, trip. And the nice thing about these rewards is they are transferable. So if you do not be able to use them, you can always redeem them and give it as a gift to someone else that can be able to use the rewards. And if you go into the next slide, it just talks to the non-resident offerings that we have, because we also know that some of the, uh, of the customers that are across the globe may want to do banking with us, but not necessarily be in the country. So we offer them a non-resident account at a monthly fee of 5750 a month. And with a non-resident account, because this account is regulated by the Reserve Bank, they can only fund it with funds from abroad. However, if there is a need to fund it with local funds, um, for example, you may find a person that has a property in South Africa that they bought for investment purposes and they're renting it out. So those rentals that comes into this account, we, we would need to declare that to the Reserve Bank to say that those funds that are coming into these accounts, it's for rental purpose. So you may find some, someone actually using this account for, for that purpose. And we're also allowing people to be able to do business in the country because some of the people that are across the continent as well as across the globe, they do business in South Africa. And with a non-resident account, it, it's just there to enable them to be able to do transactions for, for their businesses. And then also maybe some of you may have some kind of a small business or maybe aspiring to have a small to medium enterprise in the near future. We also offer a business uh, diamond advantage account. It's a simple business account with a monthly fee of 60 rent per month. And the rest of the fees 
it's pay as you transact. On this account, you also get issued with a debit card. You can do internal banking. You can access the account via the banking app. You can do transactions. You can do transfers. You can do balance inquiries. You can draw statements and et cetera. This is also to enable a small business customer to separate their business, um, you know, business activities from personal activities because sometimes you may find someone actually operating their business from their personal account. It's not ideal because in the near future also you may want to, you know, look for funding, look for loans and etc. And they always calls for a business account. So it's important to rather uh, have your own business account should you run a business. And this account is just aimed to assist those small aspiring business entrepreneurs to look at having a business account. And then if we move away from this, um, the next one is just on the high net worth. Like I've mentioned, we have our high net worth uh, suite at Da Vinci, which is in Sentin. This is to cater for our very rich customers that are also doing business in South Africa. And you can see the requirement there is that um, they need to at least earn about a million and above and they need to have 5 million um, investable assets in form of maybe paid up houses or paid up cars that is worth that amount. And then maybe also be an existing high net worth customer within one of our subsidiaries, whether in Nigeria, whether in Ghana or Mozambique and et cetera. And then they must also be willing to open a fixed deposit of about 2 million at least for 12 months. And the features on this account the customer, if they open this account, they are able to use the facilities that we have at the high net with a suite at Da Vinci, whereby they will have a dedicated relationship manager. We have a very beautiful boardroom that they can book for their own meetings to meet their customers and prospective uh, customers. They get a black card. They get also linked to the legacy lifestyle rewards program, which is offered by the, uh, by the Da Vinci Hotel and Suites which has over 200 partners and offering them over 15% discounts for whether it's accommodation, whether it's car rentals, whether it's shopping, there's a whole lot of um, products that the customer can actually benefit from. So this is mainly for our high net worth and we can open them a normal um, transactional account or open them a non-resident account if they are not based in the country. And then the next slide is just to give you a view of what our branches look like. Uh, Mr. President, you can help me to go to the next slide. Thank you very much. So on this slide, you can just see what our branches look like. And these are just some of the pictures of our branches. On the top left, you can see the high net worth suite that we have at Da Vinci. And then on your middle uh, center there, you have Gandhi Square branch, which is in town. On your top left there, you, we have Cape Town, which is at the St. George's Mall. The bottom left, we have the Savannah Mall, which is in Bolokwani. And then the bottom right, we have St. Mark Square, which is in Pretoria. And like I've mentioned, we're currently working on Devon CBD, which we will be, will be able to open, I think, on the 14th of October. And then the slide that I did not include here is just around the documentation to open the account. We are quite easy in terms of the documentation because we know how other banks are very stringent and very difficult with you know, the documentations, especially when a foreign national is trying to open an account. So with us, we, we request or require a passport, a valid passport, as well as a valid permit. And a permit, I think in your case, would mostly be a study visa because most of you are actually in the country to study. And then for those that are already working, it would be a working visa. And to some of you that perhaps are already running businesses, it may be a business a visa. Some could be in the country maybe, you know, because they're here to stay with a relative, they may have a relative visa, we also accept that as well. And those are the identifications, uh, documents that we would request. Obviously, if you are a, a, a South African citizen, we then request for a, an ID document. And then also in terms of the proof of residence, because we know it's quite difficult for people to actually produce the proof of residence because sometimes you may be staying with a friend or staying with a cousin. So we also accept um, proof of residence 
or we can also open an account without the proof of residence. However, the account without the proof of residence, it has little bit of limits whereby customers cannot have more than 100,000 in a month in that account. So should you have 100,000 and above, you would then need to produce your FICA document, which is your uh, proof of uh, residence. And then also we are aware of some of the foreign nationals that are in the country that are struggling to actually renew their permits because of the issues with the home affairs and the maybe staff are not able to renew them. We're also looking at changing our policies to allow only the valid passport to open the account. However, this is still in progress. We're looking at having this actually um, active from mid-November. And then we also understand that some of the uh, foreign nations that are in the countries or diasporas, they may actually have a Islam seeker or a refugee document. And I'm excited to announce that we are the only bank in South Africa at the moment that accept the Islam seeker or refugee document to open the account. However, that document will have to be valid for us to, or, uh, to accept it, to open the account. And then the last, uh, the last um, slide that I have on here is just our mobile truck or our mobile bank that we use. As you can see there, it's a truck that we drive around in various location, and then we assist customers in opening their accounts. And the customers are able to open their accounts on the spot and be issued with a debit card and immediately be able to go and make their deposits at the ATM. And maybe you may also ask, but Thomas, um, you guys are still quite new. You've only mentioned about six branches across the country. How can I deposit? Because you guys probably don't even have ATMs. So what we've, we've done currently is to partner with APSA, APSA Bank, to use their ATMs for our customers to be able to make deposits. So once you open the account, you would receive a special account that you have with APSA as well as your account with Access Bank, which you would use as a reference. And you are able to make deposit at any of the APSA ATM across the country. And APSA, by the way, they have over uh, 1,600 um, ATMs across the country. So that, that's what we've, we've, we've used or we've, we've actually uh, accommodate, uh, accommodated for in the interim whilst we're looking at opening more branches and then hopefully later to have our own access bank ATMs. So that's in a nutshell. And today what I ask uh, Mr. President to allow us is to just to share with you, you know, just to give you a brief, a brief a background about access bank and our offerings and the documents that we request to open the accounts. And we also, going to be joining the CONSERVE um, um, event that is taking place next week, Saturday, and we'll be on site on that day with the team and we'll be able to engage you further in terms of assisting you to open the account and also, you know, fielding any questions that you may have. Mr. President, thank you so much for the opportunity. And I see there are already questions that are coming into the chat but I'm not sure as to how you'd like to, uh, for us to deal with it. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Thomas. We really do appreciate the opportunity to have you here. It's a great privilege we do not take for granted. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to read out some of the questions that we have here. The first question here is, um, what are the package available for housing properties for people interested? Do you have a mortgage fund for housing properties in South Africa for Nigerians without PL or Nigerians with PL? Did you get the question, sir? Yes, I'm looking at it, Mr. President. Thank oh. you. So in, in terms of lending, uh, we are already doing lending um, we are able to assist customers with either home loans uh, to buy houses as well as vehicle finance uh, to buy their vehicle uh, vehicles in South Africa. So that we are able to assist uh, customers. However, the customers would have to produce the, their, the, their 
the, their documents in terms of, you know, if you're employed, we need uh, pay slips, we need uh, bank statements from where you're earning your salary. And then we, we would also need the offer to purchase, especially if it's a home loan of that property that you wish to buy. And then we'll assist you with the application. And then we, you may actually also have to have a deposit. Probably we're looking at about 10% deposit because you know, ideally we would want a customer to first bank with us to create a banking relationship with us for them to qualify for better offerings in the future. But we know that maybe a customer may not necessarily have an account with Access Bank. So normally with customers that are coming from other banks, they, our credit team may actually call for a deposit, which is just around 10 to 20% that we'd need to contribute towards the, the mortgage um, loan. And then the last part, um, I just want to understand because it talks to for housing properties in South Africa for Nigerians, uh, and then in the brackets it says without PR. I'm not sure what does the PR stands for. If um, you mean, I can just okay. get a sense Okay, what it means actually is um, Nigerians without PR are Nigerians that just have probably critical work skills as in permit or study visa or work permit in general. PR is actually for Nigerians that have permanent residence permits. Okay, thank you yeah. so much, Mr. President. So if you have a permanent resident, by all means, you do qualify. You can apply for those um, lending facilities like I've mentioned, home loan, as well as vehicle finance. And then if you're here with a work permit, again, we can still assist you with home loan and as well as uh, vehicle finance. And then for non-resident, if you want to buy a property on credit in South Africa, but you're not in South Africa, you can also still apply for funding. However, here is the condition. It can only be 50% loan to value. Meaning if you're buying a house for a million, as a bank, we can only loan up to 500,000. You would need to pay the other 500,000 as a deposit. Okay, sir. Um, the next question is like you've answered it. I'm not sure. It's um, what are the requirements for opening a non-resident account? Thanks, Mr. President. So the non-resident, like I've mentioned, if it's for someone that is not in the country, someone that is not in a position of a permit, and they need to produce a passport, a valid passport from their home country, as well as a valid proof of resident from their foreign country. So those are the two requirements for them to open a non-resident account. So non-resident account, like I've mentioned, um, we open it for people that comes into the country, maybe to visit, comes into the country for business purpose and etc. But ideally it's for someone that is not in the country because you need to fund that account with funds from abroad not with funds from local, because if there's any local funding coming to this account, we need to declare that to the Reserve Bank and state the reason where those funds are coming from. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Um, please, with that, can you... Okay. Okay. Um, the next question... Or uh, it's uh, more like a suggestion, but um, Dr. Kinsley, sir, that is in the line in conjunction with um, Consuge. So Access Bank is already looking at that, but in partnership with Consuge. So we will sort that out later. The next question uh, is from Miss Okwalua, if I'm not mistaken. Definitely, Ma, as in um, Access Bank is going to be on ground next week, Saturday. And everyone can actually come along with your passport, or if you have a South African ID, you can come along with it as well to have your account open. I'm going to be there from 11 to 4. Am I right, Mr. Thomas, sir? That's correct. I'm excited already from Ms. Uh, Mrs. Um, Opelua's question. Yeah. Um, yes, we're going to be there with the forms. We're going to assist you to open the account next week, Saturday on the 5th. We're going to make sure that when you leave, your account is already sorted out. Yeah, thank you. So please spread the word, as it, as it said, the word across to others as well that couldn't attend the meeting due to load shedding. 
Also, our professor is actually asking a question. He's um, asking, do access bank offer personal or bank consolidation loans? Thanks, Mr. President. Yes, the, the question to Professor uh, Olubambi, definitely we do offer personal loans, um, not necessarily consolidation loans. However, Professor, you can take out a personal loan and then be able to go and settle the other loans yourself. Because a consolidation loan, but you can apply for a personal loan. Um, that would be enough for you to settle the other loans that you have. But the main thing, Professor, is as far as the loans are concerned, it's based on affordability. So we we'll assess affordability based on your income and the current expenses that you have. And should we see that you can afford this loan, we'll definitely approve it, Prof. Thanks. OK, um, the next, OK, this is from someone. I opened account last year, August, with Assets Bank after Standard Bank denied even when I came. Um, Mr. Anwosu Victor, is this like a compliment or a question? I'm not sure. It sounds like a compliment. Okay. I'm actually quite happy. Okay. Actually, it's a, actually, President, it's a compliment because when I came to South Africa newly, I went to Standard Bank and for no reason, they didn't want to open an account to me. So I went to Access Bank because I, I checked online and I found that Access Bank had a bank here in South Africa. So everything was done online. I submitted all my documents. It was done, and you know it has been more than a year, and I'm still with Access Bank South Africa. Okay. Thank oh, you thank you so much, Victor. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Victor. So it's uh, a it's a compliment. Okay. Thank you for that compliment. All right. Um, Mr. Thomas, sir, somebody is asking a question similar to what we've asked you. So we would also, as in that is one of the questions that I think a lot of people would want to you as in you to elaborate on. That is, can one use the Access Bank Nigeria app to do online transactions here in South Africa if one opens an account with you? Yeah, that if one has a Nigerian Access Bank account and decides to open another one here, can one use the same app that they use in Nigeria or they have to? Uh, make use of another one. Yes, no, definitely. So, so they'll have to use another another access more app. We call it access more app because each subsidiary or each country they have their own mobile banking app. So, if you already have an, a Nigeria account and the banking app that side, you would have to open another account with South Africa Access Bank, and on the same app. You just need to change it because on the top there, on the top right, it has countries. So you just need to change it to South Africa so that you can be able to access your South African account. Because unfortunately, the, the app does not link accounts across the subsidiaries. Okay. Um, there's a question also. I think this is from someone that has been to one of your branches here in South Africa. He says... Yes, I yeah, she says, um, please explain moving of funds home better. I guess the person went to your branch at Gandhi Square and was told um, he or she cannot do transactions between the account here and that in Nigeria. Yes, I see the, the question from Onyinye. Um, yes, that's, that's correct. Um, there's the, the movement of the funds. What we're currently working on, it's an app called Access Africa. So this app, we are hoping and praying that it can come live by end of November. So with this app, you'll be able to actually do the movements of funds across. So you can be able to move money from your Access Bank South Africa to Access Bank Nigeria or vice versa. So as of today, we assist customers to move funds manually. So there's a form. It's not a long form, it's about one page, if not two, which you will complete with your other uh, banking details from the other subsidiary. And then we, we assist you with a swift transfer, which can take up to 48 hours for those funds to be credited 
in the account in another country. So at the moment it's done bit manually, but then with the Access uh, Africa app that is coming live end of November, you will be able to do those transfers at the comfort of your own home through your phone. Mr. President? Sorry, I yeah. didn't know I was mute. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank Sorry, you. No, I, just, no. I just want to make a recommendation. Um, I For those asking if you, want, if you can apply with your BFS receipt, yeah, I think I it's possible because that was I did last in August. I applied when I was even applying for my uh, visa. So I had like the VFS receipt to show that I applied for visa. So I used that too, plus other documents. Just to clear that. Absolutely. So we do accept the receipt as well, just to confirm that you've applied for your visa and you're still waiting for it. We do take that receipt and attach it to the documents that you have. That's 100% that's correct. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. I'm trying to see. Mr. Um, for everyone who wants to contact Access Bank, please try as much as possible to be on ground on um, next week. I believe they are going to be there. Mr. Thomas has also confirmed they are going to be there from 11 to 4 p.m. And if you want to contact them directly, you have to channel it through Consuch. But opening of accounts, go directly on um, Saturday and do that. Uh, okay, Mr. Mosu is still, oh my. Mr. Mosu is a very good customer of yours, as in, sorry, a client of yours. He needs an award. So, Ms. Abidemi, that has been answered. Yeah, I think that's, those are all the questions. Those are all the questions for now. Thank you very much. Yeah, and, um, sir, you want to say something? No, no, Mr. President, I was saying maybe in the interest of time so that I also don't take much of your time. And I know you've got another, a, 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 like other items on the agenda. We are happy to engage uh, with everyone next week, Saturday, when we are on the ground. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Thomas. We are so grateful. The entire members of Consuge and the executives are so grateful for having you. Thank you so much, Mr. President, for the yeah. opportunity and for everyone for you know, giving us the opportunity to listen to us. And we're quite excited and looking forward to engage you further next week, Saturday. Thank you. Um, okay. I'm trying to see if we have Mr. Malifu. Okay. Um, I think Mr. Malefu is not around. I'm sure it's due to load shedding because we actually, we were at his office yesterday and he confirmed. So most likely next time he would be joining us as well. Once again, if you want to get more info about opening an account with Access Bank, try as much as possible to avail yourself at um, the Ninja Day coming up next week. We also want to use this medium to appreciate each and every member of Consuge that has voluntarily contributed towards Ninja Day. Thank you very much. You still, as in uh, voluntary contributions are still being accepted by Dr. Miriam, or you can as well pay such into Consuge account with as in a um, constant account, we all have access to the account details on our WhatsApp group. And please remember to put the reference Ninja Day, because remember we are making constant t-shirts. And when you're paying for constant t-shirt, please remember to put t-shirts so that we don't use the wrong fund for, as in, um, as in the fund for the wrong purpose. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions to ask. Professor Ulubambi, because we would like to call him to help us round up. Oh, okay, Mr. Bim, is it Mr. Bimbo or Miss Bimbo Martin? Sorry, you can ask your questions. 
as in a question or questions. You can unmute yourself, please. Oh, okay. I thought the person raised up their hand. So we'd like to call um, Professor Lubambi to help us round up this um, symposium, maybe with more word of encouragement. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we are still in the morning. I want to use this opportunity to really appreciate I mean, everyone who have found time to attend the meeting. I really um, feel more, uh, I think there's more development progress for what you people are doing. I um, remember when I was at VETS then, those years, we were many then, we, we, are, we are very good friends because the majority of us then, we uh, mature people that are lecturers, we, are, we always gather, there's a VETS, I mean, there's a place that we always gather to, to talk, even though some of us, we don't drink, we join them. So it was a very, very um, interactive uh, um, um, years then. Uh, we tried to uh, establish Nigerian students, but it was not possible then because of the fact, uh, the way Nigeria were perceived then. So we ended up um, establishing West African Student Association, I mean, adverts, even the majority are, are Nigerians. Let me solve almost about ninety percent, but I'm not sure if it's still very active as it is. My advice for you, um, my um, my brothers and sisters, please try to be uh, the best of your friends. We are all here uh, to study. Some of us are here, um, especially um, female, married. Um, some of the women came here because their husbands are here, and they just have to study and stay with their husband. Whereas some of us are still uh, with the moving train. We don't know where we are going tomorrow. And like I used to tell my group, um, I, mean, I have a, a large group of Nigerians. I see them together. I always have meetings with them. I have a, a special WhatsApp group that I have created with them. Um, when I used to talk to them, then they feel that possibly I was um, forcing them. I was, um, I was behaving like Nigerians to them. I said, no, that don't worry. I mean, anything I tell you, don't. Don't feel bad, but now they are they are all enjoying it. They are all over the world sharing um, progresses. There will be advert, there will be job. Many of them have gotten jobs through to their colleagues. So what I'm just trying to say is that try to keep um, the relationship, build a, a formidable relationship. Some of you will remain in South Africa. Some of you will go back to Nigeria. Some of you will go to other part of the world. Please try to build a very, very strong relationship. And if they are, because I know that there are many of the Nigerian students that are not part of you, there are very many. Please try to bring them um, to yourselves and ensure that they, they participate a lot. Um, Dr. Kingsley has a lot of friends. I've, I've not been seeing his friends. I'm joining you. I, I, I hope that next time, Kingsley, you will try to bring your friends. Um, you know the people I'm talking about. So try um, try to ensure that your um, your association is very vibrant. Um, as we have discussed today, please try as much as possible to 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 ensure that you take advantage of um, why you are here. Um, and if you don't know the purpose of it, in definitely you won't you won't be able to value it. You will I mean, abuse it. If you know why you are here, if you know why you left Nigeria. So definitely, definitely, you will now try to see how to pursue it. Pursue it together. Some of you might have scholarship today and don't look down on others that don't have. Um, it, I mean, if you have scholarship and your colleagues that probably you have been spoiled by the same professor don't have, there's a way that you can say try as, as much as possible to be to be a brother's keeper. And if things are not working for you today, don't think that things will not be working for you for the main part of your life. Try not to, uh, Try not to see your supervisor or, or, your, or your line manager as someone that is very, very bad, or just try to understand that there's purpose uh, in everything that we go through. So I really wish that God will help us, that we will um, return back home 
safe. Um, some of what we want to stay back either in South Africa or go to other part of the world. I know that there's no one among us that will not want to go back to Nigeria one day. I mean, we're all here, no matter how good this place is, no matter how nice the US is, many of us will still want to go and build houses in Nigeria. Many of us will still want to go and um, build um, businesses in Nigeria. Let us try the best of our abilities to see how we can achieve what we are here for. I think that a few people have questions, but let me just say this. I was listening to someone sometimes who were talking about Nigeria in diaspora. And the person was actually talking a lot about how diaspora has actually helped in developing every nation. No matter how good this place is, no matter uh, the opportunity that, that, that lies here, let us remember that if our home were to be better, we won't really have the need to want to relocate. So let's all try to see how best we can remember home, how best we can help our people from home, how best we can help our families from home, how best we can help our friends from home. I learned a lot of things here in South Africa. South Africa, they, they like their families a lot. They are not like Nigerians. There are some of you in Lagos and Ibadan and Abuja. They say, no, don't go home, they're witches and, and witchcraft. But here in South Africa, you see them in, in Jobok, they all go to Limpopo, they go to their villages. Let us try to see how we can be part of the development of our country. And I pray that God will help each and every one of us. The purpose, why we are, why we are here in South Africa, I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, God will actually make us to achieve more than our dream. Thank you so much. I think there are a few questions. I don't know what that's for me. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Um, I think um, we have Ms. Adeyemi first. He raised his hand first. Mr. Adeyemi, you can go, sir. Okay, now. Uh, good day, everyone. Thank you so much. Like, I would like to thank the Council Executive for organizing this interactive uh, section. It has been so educative. And I think I've learned a lot of things based on what uh, the invited guests have said so far. Then special thanks to our patron, uh, Professor Lubambi, then the uh, invited guest from the Access Bank, Mr. Thomas, I really thank you all. Then uh, I just want to, regarding to the preparation for the Nigeria Day Fiesta Day, like being the, as the chairman of the planning committee, what I observe is that the contribution so far is far below our expectation, I mean the budget. So I would like to advise everyone, please try as much as possible to contribute. No amount is too small. Just you can contribute maybe 50 rand or just us, so it will go a long way. So it's just an advice <clears throat> because based on our budget, on the proposal we submitted as a committee, is uh, we still have less lesser amount. So I think between now and Thursday, you can still contribute any amount you can afford. Yes, man. So thank you so much. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Miss Emilodua. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Prof. And good morning, everybody. Thank you for the presentation, sir. And then thank you, Dr. Bain, for the emphasis on the contribution. But my question is to Prof. Um, Prof, sir, please, I want to ask you how you how you handle um how you handle hostility from the indigenes around you, because I know that you might have come across it. I don't have a personal um, experience of people being hostile to me because I look like them. I look like South African, so they don't really till I speak before they know that I'm a Nigerian. But um, I want to really ask practically, sir, in all the years that you have been here, have you been able to undo the hostility that you find around, especially when people now know you are Nigerian? There's just this kind of air of oddness around. How do you undo that, sir? Uh, okay, thank you so much. <clears throat> I mean, fortunately, no, I've never had any experience of hostility here, here in South Africa. And I must tell you that I am actually more accepted and loved in South Africa than I'm loved in Nigeria. Um, one of my, the parents of one of my students close to me, the land that he gave to me to farm is more than the entire land of my family in Nigeria. So I am loved here, many of me, because the way I relate with a lot of people. But despite the fact there are a few issues that I've had, um, not directly to me. When I first came at VETS um, in 2005, the 
the secretary or the, the there's some people will be asking me when are you returning back home. I didn't feel that it's not hostility to me, but I just feel from where we come from. I mean, if someone came to visit you and they are beginning to ask when are you going home, it means that they don't really want you to be around. That was when I began to understand that South Africans don't want foreigners to actually stay here. And I mean, in my place of work, I have actually been, um, I have, I mean, actually had more issues with Nigerian, with, with, with fellow Nigerians and other African countries than um, South Africans. So, so the, the work issue that I've had, the work problem I've had is not because of um, being, being a foreigner or not. But let me just say this. Um, if, you, um, uh, if you are, okay, there are some comments that people say generally about Nigerians. There are some of them that I really don't like. Um, that, that, I, mean, I, I saved a particular video on my phone. And that was actually the turning point that made me to think of my country more than I ever did. That person was saying that um, if our country is okay, that why are we here? That, um, that especially Nigerian, we come to South Africa, we begin to brag. We, we say that um, we are better than them, we are better than they. That go back to your country, go back to your country, go back to your country. And that, and that thing really touched me a lot, uh, apart from the fact that I love, my, I love my country a lot. So, and since then, I tried the best of my ability. I am trying to invest more in Nigeria than I'm doing here in South Africa. I'm trying the best of my ability. I go to my village to start farm. I have supermarket in my village. I'm trying the best of my ability. Even I'm starting one, one in Akure. I want to just ensure that I invest more and to make my country in my own little way so that someone else will see it and will do something. So um, if you are being, uh, probably you are being looked down upon, that one should be something to motivate you to develop your country. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir, for that. Uh, Mr. Victor. Okay. All right. Uh, um, Prof, because what you just said, you know, before, you know, you stopped saying is that we should, uh, I don't think we should pander because we should also understand that and anybody can travel to anywhere in the world, okay? You can't allow people to detect to us where we should be, you know, in terms of all this, there's xenophobia and whatever. People are free to move to anywhere they want to. People can stay in any country that they want to stay. It's not, uh, you know, we can't allow people to intimidate us because we want to stay in their place. It doesn't make sense. For me, I've lived in more than four countries and uh, it's no different to what they say about us, whether it's in England, Canada, Liberia, Kenya, anywhere. But the fact is that we are all human beings. We can live where we want to live and stay where we want to stay. Nobody has the ability to be asking us stupid questions, when are we going? We are all human beings. The South Africans themselves should also start imbibing the form of traveling because traveling is an experience. I've been traveling since I was 12. I'm 37. I've had four passports in my lifetime. I've been to more than four nations outside Nigeria. And it's still the same, you know, hate, or should I say, I don't know if it's even hate, I just don't know what it is because it's becoming annoying. It doesn't make sense. Fine. We all want to go back to our country to develop it. But at the same time, we are humans. We can stay where we want to stay. Because here in South Africa, I don't see the South Africans giving the Europeans a tough time when they come to their country. But they give it to foreign nationals for no reason. That's all I have to say. So can I just say this? Um, I, I thank you for this question and for this platform. And I'm glad that I mean I'm more of an ideal person to to many of you. Um, I have this. Okay, you, you will see um, the background. I mean, I have a foundation called Rock Education Foundation. Now the the what do you call it? The idea uh, or, or the vision is changing now. I am more into uh, community development. I mean, community. Tra I mean, transformation, village education. 
See, can I tell us this one? If we are not careful as Nigerians, people will be ridiculing us anywhere we go. You cannot continue, you, you can't be telling Europeans not to talk to bad about Nigeria. You can't talk, you can't take Ghana not to talk bad about Nigeria. We should talk to ourselves. That's just the main fact. We should talk to ourselves. Now, um, okay, by the, I mean, by the virtue of, let's say, age and stuff like that, I mean, the age that I am now, I should think more about what happened to the next generation. Now, if by now I am privileged, I mean, I'm a professor, even the professor don't earn much, but at least I'm blessed a bit, and I don't remember, what can I do at home? And all I'm thinking is, is, is about building something, in, in something, doing everything, doing everything. A time will come when people are talking bad to my children and grandchildren. If I don't remember home, I'm sorry to say, many of my South Africans have visited me at home. They still want to visit me at home. I mean, last year now, they were fighting me because the fact that the way I carry myself. So, and I'm trying to do something at home. So if you don't carry yourself in a, in a respectful way, People will ridicule you anywhere you are. We Nigerians, we need to change. What are we doing at home? What, I mean, we all finish from a particular primary school, a, a, a particular secondary school. What are we doing to help those schools? I'm sorry to say, do you know something? Some of us, we are, we are, we are in scholarships here. Do you know that this primary school that we, we attended, there are no teachers there. If you are from Mondo State, I'm from Mondo State. I mean, government don't pay, they don't, they don't give us teachers. And to pay, to pay, I mean, to pay a teacher in a primary school, some of them are even giving them 10,000, 15,000. It means that some of you, you can still even be paying the salary of a teacher, even though you are a student. You can be sending 400,000, I mean, 400 grams home every, I mean, every month. If you send it through, I'm sorry to say, if you send it through, there's a, um, um, what do you call it, black market, you know, 400,000, I mean, 400 rand is almost 16,000. You can be paying the salary of a teacher. So if we are all in South Africa, we are all in UK, we are all in everywhere, and we are not thinking of home, we're not making our home better. I mean, now many of us are in labor, you never have I mean, a structure at home. When your mother dies, you, you don't know where to, to take them to. It's not okay. Let us think about home. It is the way you carry your home. It is the way you, you, you I mean, when people come to your home and they say, no, this person has a home, this person has a family. Those people will respect you, but we are all over the. I mean, all over the world. Even we have said, even you yourself that is talking. I'm not talking about. I'm not attacking you as a person. Let's say John or um, Adiyamita is talking now. Do you talk good about Nigeria? We have said we don't talk good, good about Nigeria. How do you not expect others to be talking good about us? So it's. I mean, it, I mean, let us start from ourselves. Let us carry ourselves. Let us respect our home. Let us respect where we come from. Many of us we don't want to go home. Many of us, we don't want to go home. Where are the people here by December? They want to go to their villages. We were talking that they are witches and witchcraft. At the end of the day, when they're talking bad about us, we should not feel bad. So I'm just advising, I'm just motivating each and every one of us. The best way for you to be respected outside is when you are respected at home. If your home is okay, if you carry your mother, if you carry your father, if you carry your, your sister that are not educated, that, that, that cannot even speak, uh, go come. If you respect them, you should dress them very well. If you hug them, when other people see them, they will give them the respect. But if we don't, if we don't move close to them, if we do that, this place, these people are, I mean, this place is not developed, Nigeria is not developed, the roads are bad, there's no electricity. We are saying it outside. Other people will also say the same thing about us. I don't know if I've said anything. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for the response. We are grateful. Mr. President, um, round up. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Sir. We are so grateful. Thank you to everyone. Ms. Apolua, what are you eating? We are coming to ask for dinner. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. We are so grateful. Hope to see each and every one of us on the 1st of October to celebrate Nigeria Day together. Please note there is no African time. 11 is 11. And we are still believing that uh, we'll receive your voluntary donations, just like the um, chairman has actually pleaded with each and every one of us. We are humbly appealing to everyone. No amount is too small. No amount is too small. 
Thank you. Also, please spread the word across with regards to Access Bank. Now you are aware that um, Access Bank and Consuge, we are building something together, is no longer in news. So, and part of um, part of what will actually strengthen that bond and that relationship is to ensure that um, people open an account with them. In that way, Consuge will also benefit in one way or the other. So thank you once again. If um, there is no other question, which I believe, can I ask Afar, uh, sorry, Mr. Ismail, to actually pray for us? He was supposed to give the opening prayer. So you can go ahead, sir. Yeah, we give thanks to God Almighty for today's meeting. And we pray that God continue to grant us a successful stay in South Africa. And we pray that God bless our country, Nigeria. We pray that God bless everywhere we are, everyone and our families. We pray that Almighty Allah continue to guide us. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend Amen. and heritage day.